this is from our trip when we went to Hot Springs and we went to the Mid-America Science Museum. One of the things my kids wanted to do was go to see the largest conical Tesla coil in the world. And we sat through the entire Tesla uh, coil show. And so that's what this video is. It's basically the entire show so you can hear and see what we did there. That means I need to take off my mask. I am spaced out enough from everyone and this way you will definitely be able to hear me better. Okay, but so before we get started, I just am gonna go over a couple of important things with you. First, this is a cage lightning demonstration and with lightning comes thunder, all right? So it's gonna be dark and it's gonna be really loud. But luckily for us, we all have our very own set of built-in headphones. All right, they're located at the end of your right arm and your left arm, okay? Just like that. All right, so we're gonna practice putting on those headphones when I count down from three. Are we ready? In three, two, one. Perfect. So we wanna make sure we're doing it like this and not like this, because this makes you look like an elephant and it just doesn't work as well, okay? All right, next. If you would like to take pictures of our coil in action, please do, we actually encourage it. Just make sure that your flash is off. That's what's gonna give you the best quality image of our coil. If you do not know how to turn off your flash, that is okay. Just look around the room and locate the nearest young person to you, and they will be able to assist you with that. All right, and lastly, if you need to leave the theater for any reason during the show, please feel free to do so, you are not trapped in here. If you look to my left, we've conveniently labeled this door exit. So you can just get up and head out that door. You take a left, you'll be right at the dino dig. If you take a right, you'll be able to re-enter the museum down that direction. Um, however, there's no re-entry to the show for any reason. All right, let's get started. So, you all are in the Tesla theater. So what do you think of when you hear the word Tesla? Cars. Cars. Yeah. Did you, what'd you say? Our car. Oh yeah, y'all y'all got a Tesla. Super cool. My dad did. Lightning. Oh, lightning. That's a good one. Electricity. Electricity. Good. So sometimes we hear Tesla the car. That is a great modern example of Tesla. Sometimes we hear Tesla the rock band. Uh, Tesla has actually been in our theater before at like 3 a.m. one day. It was really weird. They were super cool. Um, we hear things like lightning and Frankenstein, but today we are going to be talking about the Serbian American inventor and the greatest scientific mind of his time, Nikola Tesla. So Nikola Tesla was born in Croatia in 1856, and he moved to America at the age of 28 with only four cents in his pocket. He had a photographic memory, and he was fluent in eight languages. So when he gets to America, he goes to New York and starts working in a scientific laboratory under some guy named Thomas Edison. So does anyone know what Thomas Edison's famous for? The light bulb. The light bulb, perfect. That's the answer that I wanted to hear. The funny thing about Thomas Edison inventing the light bulb is that he didn't. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. I hear Thomas Edison, I think light bulb, and there's a reason for that. He is the guy who got it patented. There were lots of scientists trying to figure out how to bring electricity into homes. It was super new. But we think light bulb in Thomas Edison because he's the guy who made it to the patent store first. So a patent is a fancy government document that says, this is my idea, but if you want to use my idea, you have to pay me money. Thomas Edison was already really famous. He already had a lot of money and he wanted to keep it coming. So how this light bulb works, it's an incandescent light bulb and it, gets, it uses heat to produce light. So inside there are little filaments, which are pieces of metal, kind of look like this. They're inside, you screw your light bulb on, you turn it on, and then it gets so hot until it actually starts to glow. So if anyone's ever been like, don't touch that light bulb, it's really hot, they were talking about an incandescent bulb. However, there's another guy who made a light bulb. His name was Nikola Tesla. And he called his invention an inert gas discharge tube because Tesla's great at naming things. So how it works is in here there's a tube. That tube is filled with gases. And when gases interact with electricity, they glow. So this was much bigger than Tesla's original version. We actually found it in our parking lot, did not know we had these until it stopped working. 
However, this one does work. Has everyone seen this type of light bulb before? Yes. Okay, so this is a compact fluorescent light. It's a modern day Tesla light bulb. It works similarly to his original. So this tube that spins around is actually the same tube that holds those gases. And remember, when gases interact with electricity, they glow. So, almost a century later, American artist William Parker made some changes to one of Tesla's inventions, and he gave us the plasma ball. So what's the first thing you notice about the plasma ball? Electricity. Electricity. The bulb of the glass. Yes, so you have this electricity that's coming around the bulb of the glass. So this electricity, these blue lines are called plasma arcs. Plasma is the fourth state of matter right behind solid, liquid, and gas. So plasma is ionized gas, or gas that has been interacting with electricity. So we have our plasma arcs that are coming out of this orange globe in the center. Now that orange globe is just another glass ball, but inside of there is a teeny tiny Tesla coil. It looks a lot like that, only really, really small, and that is what's producing the electricity. So we have our Tesla coil and our plasma arcs coming out of it. But then you said that we have this electricity that's like hitting the bulb of the glass. Because so, it's trying to escape. Yes, it's trying to escape. <laughs> so what colors do we see in here? Blue and purple. Blue and purple. Okay, so what two colors make purple? Blue and red. Blue and red, perfect. So these colors that we are seeing, they're caused by the different gases that are inside of this globe. So in here, we mostly have nitrogen, neon, xenon, and krypton. Uh, yes, krypton is real. Superman is not. However, I really hope someone's working on that. <laughs> so what's creating this purple color? You have neon, that's a bright red. And then you have krypton, that's a soft blue. So when those two colors are mixing together in here, that's why we're seeing that purple. So right now, all of those plasma arcs, they're just kind of looking for a place to go. They want to escape. Now, when I put my hand on here, it thinks it is uh, trying to let it free. Yes, so what's happening right now is this globe is made out of glass. Glass is an insulator. And an insulator slows down electricity and basically contains it. But that electricity is looking for a place to go. Electricity wants to be grounded. It wants to get into the ground. So when I put my hand here, I funnel all of that electricity into my hand. It's actually going through my body and it's coming out through my feet into the floor. So what happens? First of all, let's get this slide out. So this is just a little tiny neon tube. So what happens when I do this? It's like dragging it to all the, all the chemicals and stuff down to the bottom of the Ah, field. interesting. So this right here, this is just glass with some gas inside, nothing fancy. So what's happening when I touch it is I'm actually creating a shortcut for the electricity. Now, electricity, like me on my off days, is extremely lazy, okay? Minimum movement, minimum effort. We're taking all the shortcuts, okay? So, electricity, when I touch it, I'm giving it a shortcut to the ground. It doesn't have to travel all the way to this hand. It just has to make it this far. All right, and then we have our big fluorescent tube. This is full of different gases, but the cool thing about this light is that I can do this. It does. It does kind of look like a lightsaber. I had um, a little boy one day tell me this was a fighting stick. I had to tell him, no, please do not hit your brother with this. So this is just a fluorescent light. And why it's turning on when I touch the plasma ball is because there are little pieces of metal at the end called grounding rods. And it's actually allowing the electricity to use my body like a wire to light up this light. So Tesla had a dream, and he wanted to provide free wireless electricity to everyone. So I think that it's time we make that wireless electricity just a little bit bigger by like 
a million volts of electricity. All right, are we ready? Headphones on. In three, two, one. It's a microwave, you're so right. 
So if you're gonna cook your popcorn in your microwave, do you put your popcorn on top of your microwave? No. No, right? You might wanna touch the microwave, all right? You put it in it, right? So if your popcorn's popping and you push open the door, does it stay on and keep cooking your popcorn? No. No, it shuts off, right? And that's a safety feature to keep that induction field inside. So what happens to your microwave if you put a piece of metal in it? It catches on fire. Sparks. Yeah, it catches on fire, it starts sparking, it explodes, and then you never get invited back to your friend's house ever. And I mean ever, like even 22 years later, because parents hold grudges over those types of things, okay? <laughs> so, what happens when you put metal in your microwave is, remember, electricity's lazy. So it's going to strike the closest metal to it, the bigger conductor. And so it makes your Faraday cage not work anymore. And your microwave kind of starts to look like our Tesla coil, okay? So that is my public service announcement of the day. I'm doing my due diligence. Please do not put metal in your microwave. Your parents will love you for that, okay? So by the time that Tesla died, he had around 250 patents, which sounds like a lot. I mean, I don't have a patent. But when you find out he was responsible for over a thousand inventions, something's wrong. And so some people think that we forget about Tesla because of Edison. Edison was really famous. Edison was also not a nice guy. Um, he was a businessman first. He was like a cutthroat businessman. I like to think of him as a real life supervillain. He did some terrible things to discredit Tesla, one of them involving an elephant, the other involving an electric chair. Look that up if you are interested. It is very interesting, but it really shows you how terrible Edison was. Um, so even with Edison kind of being a jerk, the real reason we forget about Tesla is because he was the world's worst businessman. He lived to invent. He was a genius. He loved the science, but he didn't care about the business side. And so other scientists would see his inventions, and they would take it and patent it for themselves. So somebody at some point asked Tesla, aren't you mad that all these people stole your ideas? And he said, no, I'm not upset that they stole my ideas. I'm upset that they didn't have any ideas of their own. Yeah, Tesla was harsh. He was a harsh guy. He also was obsessed with pigeons. He was like the crazy pigeon bird man. That's my fun fact of the day. I hope you liked it. Um, would anyone like to see the Tesla coil one more time before we go? Yes. Perfect. I just need one person to say yes. Yes. All right. Headphones on in three, two, one. Thanks so much for joining us and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.